Well, if you love your pastor and his wife, why don't you clap your hands and thank the Lord for Brother and Sister Savolci. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thought to myself, the spirit of a bishop just came on him. I mean, he had to be able to sing in order to be a bishop. And he just broke out one of the old school songs. And I was about to start running the aisles. So he just sing it one more time, but the Lord is merciful. I was about to start breaking it out right there. Amen. But when the Lord touches you, something will happen in your life. If you're thankful for the touch of God once again, can you just thank the Lord and give him praise? Jesus, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that you touched us and we spoke in tongues, <laughs> just like the Bible says. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Turn somebody and tell them I feel Holy Ghost happy. Come on, turn somebody else and tell them I feel Holy Ghost happy. <laughs> Praise God. The Bible says that there is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you're thankful to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday night, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise God. We are so thankful. Amen. For all of those that are here tonight. I, mean, I know that this is Memorial Day weekend, so everybody, a lot of people have plans. And so we understand, but thank you for being here on a Sunday night. And the Lord has showed up, and he has honored your faithfulness, your participation. And I'm so thankful, amen, that we can feel the presence of Almighty God. I, I, I'm just thankful for good church. I said, I'm thankful for good church. I think it's safe to say in, in the years that we've traveled, the last 22 years, we've been in some good church. We've been in some great church services, and we've been in some services that we were like, oh, Lord, what did I do wrong? <laughs> but I'm thankful that it feels good in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I don't want to take much of your time because this is a holiday weekend, but it's still Pentecost Sunday. And this is what got us to where we are here today. There are those who sacrificed, who paid the price. They were mocked. They were ridiculed. They were told, Pentecost is not going to make it. You people are crazy. But now everybody is clapping their hands, lifting their hands, and allowing speaking in tongues. Here we are in 2023. The services like these, when people were tired and worn out, didn't know how they were going to make it, how they were going to pay their bills, but the Lord has blessed us. And it was those who went through to help us to make it to where we are tonight. And I give God praise for that. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 18. Didn't we have a wonderful time here this morning? My Lord, the gift of faith was here in such a mighty way. And there's no telling what all happened. But I believe that we're going to hear wonderful reports of what the Lord did here this morning. And I believe that the same God that was here this morning is the same God that is here tonight. Amen. I'm expecting God to do what only he can do. If you are here tonight, you've not yet received the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. If God could do it for the two that received the Holy Spirit this morning that we know that spoke in tongues for the first time and others that were renewed and refilled with the Holy Ghost, if the Lord can do it in the prison ministry this afternoon, that the Lord can do it again here tonight. Praise God. Does anybody believe that? Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. I ask Pastor Sabochi, your name, Sister Trimble. I want you to lift up your hands right now. God's going to bless you. Amen. He is going to provide for you. You stepped out here in faith, and I just felt the Holy Ghost moving while they were singing about a way maker. Amen. Your way maker is about to come down. There's a path that he's going to pay for you and provide for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody stretch your hands toward Sister Tremble and pray a blessing on her right now. Woo. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, somebody clap your hands and believe God for it right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know God is a blessing God? I said God is a blessing God. My Lord. 
Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 18. The Apostle Paul writes these words, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled. Somebody shout filled. Be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. I just want to speak to you here tonight on this subject, under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does anybody believe that the Spirit of God is moving and what is happening here tonight is not just emotionalism, it's not just hype, but people are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, can you place your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones down and once again, uh, clap your hands, lift up your voice, uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God bless you tonight. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. So good to see Brother and Sister Poole. We love you all. We thank the Lord for you. Can we clap our hands and thank the Lord for the pools? Praise God. Amen. I told your sons, not expecting, I know it's Memorial Day. Travel can be crazy, but here you are in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we just love and give you all honor here tonight. And all the wonderful leadership team of this church, we thank the Lord for you. Has anybody ever heard of North American Youth Congress? Are there any young people, young adults and chaperones that are hoping to go to North American Youth Congress this year in St. Louis? Come on, put your hands together. We are looking forward to what God is going to do downtown in St. Louis in two months at the North American Youth Congress. If you are here and you are our guests. Number one, we want to say thank you for being here on a Sunday night. If you're watching, thank you for tuning in. If you don't know what North American Youth Congress is, it is the largest youth conference in the United Pentecostal Church International. It is the largest conference in the United Pentecostal Church International. And it is, if I'm not mistaken, the largest religious youth congress in North America. Amen. It has grown from 10,000 to 20,000, and they're expecting over 30,000 young people and young adults and North American Youth Congress this year. Can we give God praise for that? I guess I'm no longer considered a young person, but I do have a young person. Amen. And I'm just going to sneak my way up in there. But a couple years ago, uh, 2013 to be exact, uh, we were privileged to minister in the state of Michigan. And there in Michigan, uh, there's some wonderful pastors, Brother Kevin Lehman, um, who is now the district superintendent of the Michigan district, and his brother, Brother Bruce Lehman. They were, their father, uh, father was a missionary. I believe he was a regional director uh, for um, Central America. So they were raised on the missions field in Costa Rica. But Brother Bruce Lehman, specifically in his son, uh, have been over the hotel security North American Youth Congress for years and years because of the growth and because of the craziness in our world and because young people are young people they felt to have hotel security and so they lead a team and some kind of way they thought that I was hotel security material <laughs> I said the young people are gonna look at me and say we got mall cop working here <laughs> but they somehow got me to sign up to do hotel security and in 2013, Youth Congress is in Louisville, Kentucky. Is anybody from Kentucky in the house? Come on now. I knew somebody from the Bluegrass State. It was there at the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken Yum Center or Arena, I believe it is called, there in downtown Louisville. And so uh, they had assigned me and my family to the Hampton Inn, a, a nice hotel downtown Louisville. And I thought, Man, these young people are going to think I'm just <laughs> another, another student going to the conference. And um, nobody's going to listen to me. But they told me, you know what, just if you love young people, you've worked in youth ministry, it's going to be okay. And I said, okay. But thankfully, there was, that hotel had already their own hotel security. 
And so I was able to meet with the, the young lady who was working hotel security at that hotel on the first night, and we talked, and she began to explain to me all the protocols that happen if somebody has to be kicked out the chain of command, and we had our own set of, of rules that uh, the youth division wanted us to abide by uh, so that you know, no young people would be kicked out, embarrass their mom and dad, embarrass their youth pastor, their pastor. And so uh, as the time went on, the next day, the hotel security, she told me a little bit about her life story and her background. She had a Pentecostal background. She was raised as, as a child in a Pentecostal church and as a teenager, but she got away from a, her young adult years. And so she be, just gave me a little uh, a, a snapshot into her life. I explained to her that on Friday night, you know, we just really love to have church, young people, amen, that love God and everything that they have to go through, everything they have to fight through just to serve God today. Amen. I commend every young person. Amen. Especially those here at Apostolic Church of Belleville that are living for God. I commend those who are involved in youth ministry. I thank God, amen, for the youth ministry team of this church. But what you're dealing with ain't nothing like I had to deal with. I mean, what you're all dealing with is a whole lot worse. And so when young people get to that youth congress, some come from smaller churches, some come from bigger churches, some come from metro areas, others come from rural areas. Uh, but when we all get together, young people from all over the United States and Canada and now has grown to where they're coming from all over the world, they begin to praise God on a Friday night. They don't care what anybody thinks. Sometimes the preacher might not even get a chance to preach because those young people are ready to go from the sound go. And so I was explaining to the hotel security worker that on Friday night, we might have some young people coming in here that might act a little cray-cray. <laughs> it might act a little crazy. And, and you, 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 you might think, you know what, we're going to have to kick them out. We need to do something. But she said, oh, I understand. I understand how, how it goes in the Pentecostal church. Well, she told me that we're going to have an additional hotel security guard there on Friday night because downtowns and bigger cities can get crazy in any kind of city, especially, especially there in Louisville, Kentucky. And so she said, we're going to have somebody else that's going to help us. It, it was a bigger, big hotel and, and uh, eight different floors. And, and make a long story short, that last night, the Spirit of God began to move in that service. Amen. The anointing was so strong. And those young people began to respond to the presence of Almighty God. And as the Lord began to work, there were miracle signs and wonders. Young people being filled, refilled with the Holy Ghost. I knew it was time for me to make my way and get back to the hotel, amen, just, just in case. And so when I did, sure enough, one by one, young people began to stagger in. <laughs> Others were being carried in, speaking in tongues. Some were on carts. The other security worker who was not there the two nights before, he came up to the young lady that I had been working with, and he said, these young people are wasted. We have our work cut out for us tonight. And I'll never forget the words that she said to him. Whenever he said, these young people are wasted, she looked at him, and she said, they're not drunk like you think they are. They're not drunk like you think they are. It's not because of Bud or Bud Light. It's not because of Coors Light. It's not because of any wine or whiskey. It's not because of any beer. Amen. They are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Does anybody believe, amen, that when the Holy Ghost begins to move, uh, he can touch you where you turn around? Uh, does anybody believe that when the Holy Ghost begins to move, uh, he will cause you to speak in tongues? Uh, does anybody believe that when the Holy Ghost begins to move, uh, it will make you happy on the inside? Uh, can somebody stand to your feet? Uh, can somebody clap your hands uh, and praise the wonderful name of Jesus? She said, they're not drunk like you think they are. Well, praise God. I want to just do a lap all around that hotel. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we are part of here tonight. It was on the day of Pentecost. The disciples were mistaken for being drunk. As I mentioned this morning, the Bible says that when they were in that upper room, 
all 120 filled with the Spirit. When they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them uh, the utterance, uh, it was obvious to the observers uh, that there was something going on that was more than just the natural. There was a spirit that was at work. Uh, they just thought it was some spirits from wine. Uh, but the Bible says that when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together. They were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Uh, and they were all amazed. Can somebody shout amazed? Amaze. They were all amazed and marvel, saying to one another, Behold, uh, are not all these Galileans? Uh, the Bible says in verse number 12, they were all amazed. Can somebody shout amazed? Uh, they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Uh, others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Uh, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice uh, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken as ye suppose seeing is but the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel can I say it again tonight like I said it this morning they are not drunk like you think they are hallelujah Peter he didn't deny that they were drunk he said, they're just not drunk like he's supposed. You think, amen, they went down to Joel's bar, amen, and got the wrong kind of wine, but it's not, amen, from the bar down the corner, but it's from that prophecy in Joel, uh, in the word of God, uh, amen, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, they're drunk, uh, but they're not drunk on the wine that you think they are, amen, they're not drunk like he's supposed, uh, but they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Can somebody clap your hands uh, and can somebody shout hallelujah? On that first day of the church, people thought, these people are crazy. These people are drunk. But Peter says, just 9 o'clock in the morning. But they thought that they were under the influence of alcohol. I once had a friend who was pulled over because they were mistaken for being drunk. Cops got behind them and because they were swerving and pulled them over, make them take the test that they make them take, make them walk the, make the walk the walk, just to make sure that they're not drunk. This friend of mine was raised in, a, in church, and never had alcohol in their life, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. My friend wasn't drunk, they were just distracted. But the cops thought that they were drunk. Here in the verse of scripture that we read, the apostle Paul encourages us by contrast, providing us with this dichotomy between the natural and the spirit. He gives us this contrast between wine and the spirit. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. No doubt the apostle Paul had read Proverbs chapter 20 verse number 1. Where the Bible says that wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Amen. Not only wine, but we can put any alcoholic beverage in this particular scripture. That it is a mocker. That that strong drink of alcohol is raging. It will cause you, amen, to rage. And whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I ask you here tonight, is this the reason? Why the Apostle Paul wrote the words that we read here in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. To be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Is that the reason why he wrote those words because of what was written in Proverbs 20? Was he just railing against wine, against alcoholic beverage? Or was he digging at something a little bit deeper? I will submit to you tonight that in order to answer that question, one would need to read the immediate context that Paul wrote surrounding Ephesians 5, verse 18. He wrote these words, and I quote from verse number 15. He says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, 
but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout in Jesus' name? This is the immediate context that Paul writes when he says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Paul wrote that because of the times that we are living in, it is important and it is imperative for us to make sure that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Can I remind us, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, that because of the world that we are living in, because of the times that we are in, we need more than just a touch of God on Sunday. But we need the touch of God on Monday and on Tuesday. Hey Amen. We need the touch of God every day of our lives. We need to make sure that we are filled with the Spirit. Amen. He said, be circumspect. Uh, amen. That is, amen, to, 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 to survey your surroundings. That means, amen, to, to be observant, amen, of your condition, of your situation. Uh, be not unwise, uh, amen, uh, but be wise. Don't be foolish, uh, but be wise, redeeming uh, the time because the days are evil. Amen. It's not just because of what happened in 2020. It's not just because of the invasion of Russia into Iraq. It's not just because of the fear of what's going to happen economically, not just in our country, but in our world. But ladies and gentlemen, amen, we are getting closer to the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming again. Amen. I was up, amen, early this morning in prayer. I just could not go to sleep. I was excited, and at the same time, I can feel the enemy working. I said, not today, devil. It's not going to happen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I began to rebuke some spirits. But ladies and gentlemen, I am reminded that the devil has come down with great wrath, the Bible says, because he knows that his time is short. Amen. There are things that are happening in the spirit realm, and they're being manifested in the natural. There is a shakening that is happening, ladies and gentlemen, when people do not under, when there is a spirit of confusion uh, that is trying to invade not just adults, but also young people and little children, uh, I'm coming to tell you that the days are evil. The Bible says there is going to come a time where people would call good evil and evil good. We are living in that time. The Bible says uh, that they're going to call light darkness and darkness light. Uh, we're living in that time. The Bible says that gross darkness uh, is going to cover the earth. Uh, we're living in in that time but at the same time the Bible says to awake uh, to arise uh, amen to let your light shine uh, let the glory of the Lord shine upon you uh, amen I believe that even though we are living in evening time uh, that even though we are living in the last days uh, these are evil days yet uh, the Bible gives us an understanding that at evening time there shall be light uh, I believe that this is the greatest time for revival because the word of the Lord declares that it shall come to pass in the last days uh, in those times where it is evil that it's going to come to pass in the last days that God is going to pour out his spirit uh, upon all flesh uh, so no matter what's happening in our world no matter what's happening uh, in our communities I still believe uh, that the answer is Jesus uh, I still believe that the answer is revival I still believe that the answer is the Holy Ghost if you believe that can somebody clap your hands uh, and can somebody shout hallelujah Come on, somebody shall praise God. So Paul reminds us that it's not just on the Pentecost Sunday service. It's not just a Sunday night service. But we need to make sure that we are filled with the Spirit. It's a personal responsibility. Amen. I want my, my son to live for God. I want my daughter to live for God. I want my wife to live for God. They want me to live for God. As the old preacher says, it's a good thing when preachers are Christians. <laughs> it's a good thing, Sister Sabochi, that you and Pastor Sabochi are Christians. Amen. But I am human. As I've said it before many times in this church, somebody cut me off on the road. And I might get a little bit aggravated. And I got to check my Holy Ghost. <laughs> because I'm one to 
pray for them really bad. <laughs> but not a blessing. <laughs> I got an amen from Brother Back there. <laughs> but I understand it's very important that we take that personal responsibility to make sure that we are filled with the Spirit. Amen. The times that we're living in, ladies and gentlemen, the enemy is going to try to do everything that he can to separate you from the things of God. To try to separate you from the Spirit. To try to separate you from the people of God. I mean, I feel just right now, just a little bit, amen, to just stop right here and tell somebody that you cannot make it on your own. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. Like we sung this morning, I can't do it. Unless you baptize me with the Holy Ghost. But not only do you need the Holy Ghost, but you need the body of believers, the church. Amen. It's the body of Christ. There are three metaphors that are given for the church. One is that of a bride. Amen. The church is the bride of Christ. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, uh, amen, just like the woman came out of the side of man, praise God, the church came out of the side of Christ. Uh, amen. When he died on the cross, everything uh, that he was here for was to give, amen, birth uh, to his beautiful bride. Amen. That, that doesn't sound just right. That's like you know, kind of like, like, oh, man, it's robbing the cradle there. But that's not what I meant by that. But Jesus, what he endured on the cross was to see the church come into existence. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is also referred to as a building, as it has been said many times since 2020 especially, that the church is more than just this physical location. It's more than just these bricks and more of these walls. It's more, amen, than this facility. But you are the church. You are that building, amen, that is being built up as a holy habitation to the Lord. But the church is not only the bride. The church is not only, amen, the building, but the church is also the body. Amen. We are more than a denomination. We are more than just an organization. But we are a living, breathing organism. We are the body of Christ just as Jesus was uh, here on this earth God manifested in flesh uh, the church is his manifestation to this world uh, the church amen reveals Jesus Christ uh, to this world amen and when you remain connected to the body you are able to do things and accomplish things that you cannot do on your own uh, amen there are some things that could not happen uh, if you were not a part of it but because you are part of the church uh, amen because you are part of the body God uh, can and change lives. There are some people that receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, there are some individuals that receive healing. Uh, amen. Pastor Sabochi did not lay hands on them. Uh, the evangelist did not lay hands on them. Uh, but the body ministered to the body. There are those in this altar and those in this in the pew. Uh, amen. That receive a touch from God because somebody, amen, took the hands of Jesus and touched them. Uh, somebody prayed the words of God in their lives. The enemy will try to disconnect us, uh, but I come to tell somebody that when you are filled with the spirit, uh, something on the inside of you uh, will cause you to want to be connected to the body. Amen. I come against every spirit uh, that will try to come against the body of Christ, uh, that will come try to come against apostolic church of Belleville, uh, that will try to come against individuals in this place. Uh, don't let the devil, amen, cause you to become bitter. Don't let the devil cause you to become, amen, dis disgruntled. Don't let the enemy calls you to begin to mumble and complain. Don't let gossip uh, get into your spirit uh, and cause you to become confused. Uh, don't let the enemy cause you to become severed from the body. But I come to tell you that you are a vital part. Uh, amen. That God has need of you. Uh, that you are here because the Lord has called you here and he has a work for you to do. Uh, I come to tell somebody in this place uh, that God's about to give a revival to Apostolic Church of Belleville. Oh, if you believe it, somebody clap your hands unto the wonderful name of Jesus. Yeah. 
There's about to be a revival of backsliders. I said, there's about to be a revival of backsliders. Some of you, amen, your wayward children are coming back to God. God's about to bring them back. I'm not just saying that, but I believe it. If you believe that, somebody put your hands together and somebody declare it. Somebody speak it. Somebody prophesy it. In the name of Jesus. Remain standing with me all over this house. Jesus said, Jesus said, take heed to yourselves. Let's at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. So that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Can somebody say the whole earth? Some people have taught that America is going to be spared. Some people have taught that America is not going to be touched. But Jesus says it's going to touch the whole earth. What's coming is going to affect everybody. So he said, make sure that your hearts are not overcharged. With surfeiting, with drunkenness, with cares of this life. So that they take you unawares. For as a snare is going to come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. My question to you here tonight, the question that the Holy Ghost first asks me, and I ask you, is what is influencing you? What is influencing you? Jesus said, don't be overcharged. He saw into the future. He saw the advent of the internet and social media. He saw iPhone, Samsung, Galaxy. He saw it all. He said, don't be overcharged. Because we can become intoxicated on whatever is influencing us. Is it money? Is it education? Is it a relationship? Is it entertainment? Ladies and gentlemen, there have been times that I have been overcharged with surfeiting. What's the Cardinal scores? Only the Yankees have won more championships. The Dodgers haven't. <laughs> Love Brother Ricky. <laughs> See, I, he feel the Holy Ghost now. Overcharge. Lord, I'm concerned about this country, the direction that this country is going. Who in the world can lead this country? Because America needs help. But I could get so caught up in the things of this world. I come to ask somebody here tonight Are you under the influence of the Holy Spirit? Or something else influencing you that's distracting you. Are people saying, you know what? It's because that person is led by the Spirit. Or they're saying, that person's got an attitude. That person's rude. That person's crude. What is influencing you? Because Jesus said that in the last days, because of everything that's going to be taking place, you've got to be careful. That you're not caught off guard and overcharged. You've got to protect your heart. You've got to guard it. <laughs> You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to guard it. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost brings conviction. I know some people might not like this kind of preacher, but let me just tell somebody something right now. I'm thankful for what we feel. That makes us shout, that makes us run, that makes us jump, that makes us dance. But I'm also thankful for the Spirit of God that will cause you to get on your knees. I'm thankful for the Spirit of God that will convict me and say, no, no, no. Don't step over that bound. Be careful what you do. Just because you preach, amen, you think that people felt that they were blessed by your preaching, amen, understand that there's a real devil. I heard the old bishop say that when you are preparing, amen, to preach a message, you've got to go up through the devil's living room. 
Amen. You got to start climbing up. Amen. To get to that place in the anointing where lives can be touched and changed. But you got to understand something that once you touch the throne room and once you fulfill your obligation, your responsibility, you got to come back down. And when you come back down, you got to come down to the devil's bedroom. You got to fight. <laughs> I was up fighting, amen, this, this morning. Praise God. Amen. But I understand that when it's all said and done, I got to come on back down. As my pastor, Brother Stan Gleason said, the priest, they had to take off those libidical robes. They could not keep the garment on that they were anointed in. They had to put back on their plain clothes and understand that they are human. Jesus said, be careful. He said, pray. That you would be counted worthy to escape all these things that are coming upon the whole earth and to stand before the Son of Man. Ladies and gentlemen, how in the world can we be counted worthy? Is it by our own merit? Is it by our own works? No, it's only by his grace. It's only by his work in us. That's the only way that we can be counted worthy. But as your pastor mentioned this morning, if the Spirit of Christ dwells in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. That quickening happens not just when the rapture takes place, but even here on earth. Amen. The Spirit of God would give you life. The Spirit of God would give you the ability to overcome here on earth. But then there's coming a day when the trumpet sounds. And if you've allowed the Spirit of God to work in you and through you, when that trumpet sounds, it's going to quicken your mortal body. Amen. So he said, pray that you would be counted worthy to escape all of these things. What is influencing you? I know about you, but I want the Holy Ghost to be influencing me. Amen. I said, I want to be influenced by the Spirit of God. If you feel that way, can you lift up your hands? Can somebody lift up their voice? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, let the Spirit of God do a work in you here tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget at Tennessee Youth Convention, we, uh, when I was a part of the Tennessee District, we used to hold our youth conventions in East Tennessee, beautiful Gatlinburg, and then it moved to Nashville to the Gaylord Opryland Center. They've got like a river in the inside, and you could go on a boat ride. It's pretty cool. But I'll never forget that youth convention. The guest speaker was Brother Joel Urshan. His grandfather was the general superintendent of the United Penn Council Church. His great-grandfather, Andrew Bar David Urshan, was a Pentecostal pioneer. Matter of fact, Brother Back was so kind to give me a, a CD of old Brother A.D. Urshan, amen, speaking on the oneness of God. But Brother Joel Urshan, his great-grandson, was the guest speaker. And that night, the Spirit of God began to move just like tonight. And I watched young people as they began to dance in the spirit, as they began to worship God under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I watched as they began to twirl around. Amen. Some holy roll, some ran. Nobody ran into each other. Praise God. They were in the spirit. I thought, oh my God, that's about to be a crash. But somehow they were turned around. I was like, that's the Holy Ghost. Now, it might be the Holy Ghost too if they run into each other, but... They're just not as coordinated, but man, they were, it was just amazing how the spirit of God was moving. And old brother, uh, not old brother, but brother Joel Urshan, he really did get a chance to preach. But he just got up there and followed the Holy Ghost. And he began to talk about his great grandfather. When the Lord was restoring the revelation of the oneness of God, the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus name baptism. At that time, many Pentecostals were together Trinitarian Pentecostals and what is known as the Assembly of God. And there are those who saw the, the revelation of baptism in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, the first general superintendent of the Assembly of God, which is the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. And at that time, their first general superintendent was rebaptized in the name of Jesus in Jackson, Tennessee. But because of the general secretary who felt it was heresy, he talked him out of it. And later on, he recanted. 
But there was somebody else who was a part of forming the Assembly of God. His name was H.A. Goss. Brother Goss was the first general superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church. He was an atheist raised in southwest Missouri. But when Pentecost came through his town, he realized it was real. When he saw a man healed, when he saw people gathered all together, there was a man who was Native American, who began to speak in tongues. A man, Brother Goss, who was atheist, said there is something to this. And Brother Goss began to allow the Lord to lead him and guide him. He helped form the assembly of God. And when the revelation of the name of Jesus came, Brother Goss, even though his mentor backed away, Brother Goss continued to follow. And he was our first general superintendent. But at the time that there was a fight in the assembly of God over Jesus' name baptism, and finally, their general secretary, who had major influence, calls him the force ministers who were baptizing in Jesus' name to either stop or no longer be in the assembly of God. Brother Andrew Bardavi Urshan was at that time in Russia. While he was in Russia, the man, the Russian people came up to him with their finger on Acts 2.38 and said to him, can you baptize us this way? He didn't even know what was going on in America, but the Lord was revealing truth over in Russia. And he baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. There are people who are in Russia today that are called the Urshanites. When Brother Urshan came back to America and to hear the division that was happening, how this should not be, that's not the message of Pentecost. Brother Urshan, another man of God, African-American minister from Indianapolis, Indiana, G.T. Haywood, who was not in the Assembly of God, but he preached a lot in the Assembly of God. But he was instrumental in seeing that John 3, 5 and Acts 2, 38 are connected. And G.T. Haywood preached that Jesus named baptism and receiving the Holy Ghost is the new birth. These men began to defend the name of Jesus. They said, let's continue on as we are. Let's allow our brethren to come to consciousness according to the scriptures as God works. But the men in that assembly of God business meeting voted that if you preached the oneness of God in the name of Jesus, you cannot be a part of the assembly of God. Even though Brother A.D. Urshan and Brother G.T. Hayward were not licensed in the assembly of God. Yet, amen, Brother Urshan was grieved. He was heartbroken. And as he left that meeting, he had been sitting on the platform. He came down, and Brother Joel Urshan, his great-grandson, said that when his great-grandfather stepped down, they said, you're not going to make it, you Jesus name people. But Brother A.D. Urshan, before he left that assembly, turned around, and he prophesied that one day we would have more people receive the Holy Ghost in the Jesus name churches than in the assembly of God. And can I tell you today that nobody sees more people receive the Holy Ghost around the world than the United Pentecostal Church International. The Assembly of God has even debated whether speaking in tongues is even necessary. Their own ministers have told me themselves that they don't have it. People receive the Holy Ghost like they used to. They identify more evangelical than Pentecostal. And I'm not bashing the Assembly of God, but Brother Urshan prophesied. Ladies and gentlemen, the largest religious youth event is the apostolics of the United Pentecostal Church. <laughs> Brother Urshan prophesied it in 1913. And here we are 110 years later. That night, the Spirit of God did so many wonderful things at that youth convention in Tennessee. Next door was the Assembly of God. They had a cool stage. They had the nice lights. And they were singing Kumbaya. I'll never forget when I left there. I said, Lord, this is not how we started. This is not who we are. What happened over here is who we are. Now, I'm not against the lights. I'm not against creativity. But I said, Lord, let it never be said of us that this is how the Pentecostals used to worship. Amen. Nobody knew why I was preaching except for the media team. But when I saw, amen, individuals worshiping God, especially young people and young adults around this altar. Amen. When you took a lap, I said, praise God, let me get out of the way. <laughs> but on the inside, I said, Lord, may we never lose this. Whether it's a Sunday morning or a Sunday night, <laughs> may we never lose this, Lord. 
May we never lose this, Lord. Can somebody lift up your hands? And can we pray that we will remain under the influence of the Holy Spirit? Come on, somebody lift up your voice. Somebody lift up your voice right now, huh? He cut that ya la 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 la